Okay, question number five here. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? In other words, simplify this thing. So you are supposed to simplify this and just see which one of them. Well, how do we know it's to simplify? Well, all of these look simpler than that, for sure. So basically what they're asking you here in a fancy way, because you know that's what they like to do, uh, to simplify this expression. So now, if you look at this expression, if you get intimidated, there's no reason to get intimidated, actually, because you ha there's a methodical way of doing things. The first thing you have to understand is here you can get very tricked because of this negative sign, right? So you have to be very careful with this negative sign. The first thing I would do is uh, change this negative sign, distribute it all the way in inside this big parentheses thing. So you change this to a positive, and this becomes positive, and this becomes negative, and this becomes positive. That's the first thing, number two. Then you have to, you know, combine like terms. Okay, first thing, you have to know what like terms are. Like terms are, 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 are expressions that have the, the same variable, okay, and, that, and to the same exponent, okay. So like terms are like, you know, x cubed y to the fifth and x cubed y to the fifth, like you have 3x cubed y to the fifth minus 2x cubed. Now these would be like terms because they have the same variable x and y and they are to the same exponent. Okay, that's the first thing you have to know. You have to combine the like terms. Well, if you don't know what like terms are, how are you going to combine them, right? So first thing you have to do is you have to know what like terms are. And like terms are uh, terms that have uh, the same variable, same exponent. Okay, the way you do this without getting confused and messing it up is because you do very carefully, methodically, it's easy peasy. You just look at the first term here. You don't look at anything else. You look at the first term over here, all right, and then you look to see if there's any other term in here that 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 that's like term to this one. So you don't look at like go crazy. Oh my God, what am I going to do? This is a methodical way of of solving this. So you look at the first term here, and then you go over here to scan this this whole sh shebang over here to see if there are any anything over here like that you can add it to. Well x square y is what you're looking for x square y here it is and there's no other x square y so but there is one over here so these are like terms well then you can add them so x square y there's another x square y that's going to be two x squared y's okay now and then and then you see then you get the second term so you look at this one first and then you look at this one first and then you look at this one first and each time you look and you get the first one you look to see if there's anything over there and then after you're done with that, then you go to the second one to see if there's anything over there. And after you're done with that one, you're going to go like this. That way, you don't mess it up, right? So one term at a time. So you just have to focus on the first first set of terms you're given over here and methodically take one term at a time. So we did the first term. Now this is negative 3y squared. Is there a y squared anywhere? Okay, here it is. There's a y squared, right? So we already used this one. So negative 3y squared is a y squared, but these are opposites. So you have negative 3y squared over here, and they have a positive 3y squared that cancel each other out. That's that's nice. Okay, let's see. Then, and then you get this last one over here, 5x squared. And you see, is there any other one like one? This is the only one left over here, and it happens to be a like term. So positive 5x squared y and negative 3xy uh, squared, oh, sorry, 5xy squared, negative 3xy squared. That's going to be 2 x y squared and that's this one is that what that's this one over here okay so the important thing to learn over here is to not panic or if you panic after you panic you calm down and after that you understand but you can do this very methodically you just have to look at one term at a time so you take look at the first uh, first set of uh, 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 first expression and you take the first uh, element of the first expression here and then you, you go over here and see scan the second expression for the like term so this way you keep it kind of like, you know, progressive logical reasoning, baby step type of stuff. All right. So that's this question. All right. Let's go to the uh, let's let's go to the next one. Number six. OK. Now, a pediatrician, baby doctor, a kid's doctor, a pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height of a boy in inches. So yeah, uh, when, pa see, when kids come to his office, OK, he's going to uh, estimate what their height should be. OK. Uh, in, in inches in terms of, of the boy's age a in years between 5 and 12 so any kid that comes to his office that's between ages 2 to 5 okay he's going to try to figure out what his what his height should be so the kid is not growing how's he, how's he, how is it going to compare with if the kid is going properly or not if he's malnourished or something like he's not getting food at home or something right 
So he he estimates the, what the height of the uh, of the boy should be by using this equation. Okay, twenty eight point six. So he estimates the height of the child. The child is between ages two and five. Why between ages two and five? Because this equation is not, not accurate. Uh, uh, outside of this range, the, the kid is going to growth spurt. It's not going to work. For example. Anyways, based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of um, inches of a boy's height each year? So, based on this model, how how much did the boy grows every year? Well, this one's kind of like okay. This is the height of the boy. This is the age. How much does he grow every year? Well, he grows every three inches. That's what you're adding every year. Okay. Now, uh, well, that's either kind of you know it, you kind of don't know it in a way you understand. But but this again, you have to understand. It's kind of like if you live in the next to the Himalayas and don't recognize the Himalayas type of thing, because this is another instance. Y equals m x plus b. This is a linear function. You see, y equals m x plus b, right? You live next to the Himalayas. It's like that. So you have to be able to see. Anytime, so okay, watch it. Here's another example. Okay, k minus thirteen p plus forty five. Here's another example with a linear function. Y equals mx plus b. You can just come up with a whole bunch of them, okay? C equals uh, uh, 2x plus pi, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you can come up with a lot of these relationships that are linear functions, but you have to be able to recognize. If this is a linear function, then, then you can see okay, this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is like over here. The slope is positive. So this, the, oh, that, thank God the curve is going this way. I mean, the kid should be growing, right? The, it's not going to be like this. The kid's not going to shrink. Thank God, God forbid. So, so, uh, so the kid grows how much? The rate of change is constant. That's the thing about linear functions. The, the, the defining feature of a linear function is the rate of change of the linear function is constant. So the m, which is the change in y over change in x, okay, is a constant. It's three. That's how much the boy grows every year in between the ages two and five. It grows by three inches. All right. So that's question number six. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.